Okay, so I'm going to show you three different methods of using emission textures in Blender so that you can create really just cool and unique light sources that you don't really see anyone else doing. So let's just get into it. Okay, so I'll put some examples up of where I've used these techniques that I'm about to show you. The first method is, I'll just add a, a, a plane in here, just a white square, just to have some light, just so you can see this. By the way, if you're wondering what this floor is, if you just go watch my last video, I show you how to make this thing in like two seconds. It's very easy. Um, but anyways, back to this. The first thing that I'll usually do is just take, and I'm not even kidding here, any random image from my folder of downloads from Unsplash, any random image, and just run that into the alpha and run it into the emission color. So I'm just gonna flip this around. So I'll just invert this on the alpha because this image has, if you look at this, it has a white background. So anything that's white is gonna be fully opaque and everything that's dark is gonna be transparent. So I wanna flip that around so that the background is transparent, but this thing here is um, opaque. So I'll just invert that. And you can see it's sort of working, but not really. So I need to use a color ramp. Just drop that in here. And then just, there we go, just kind of crank that up till it's somewhere in there. Okay, so let's just turn the strength up and you can see if I put something behind it. Now, anywhere that was dark in this image, because we inverted it, so anywhere that's dark is gonna be see-through and anything that's light is gonna be opaque. So that's the first thing I'll do. So you can really put anything in here. So sometimes random images like this is cool. Sometimes just displacement maps are cool. So I'll show you with like, let's try like a JS placement. If you don't know what this is, just Google this JS placement. It's just a free displacement map generator. You've probably seen tons of people use this. It's kind of overused if you just put it on a plane by itself, but I'll show you this example just so you can see what it is. So I'll just open this up. It's meant for displacement, but if you put it into the emission or if you put it into the alpha on an emissive surface, you can get some really complex looking lights without um, any effort. <laughs> So I'll just take a take the color ramp up a bit more like this. Let's take this out and just mess with this until we get something cool. So yeah, there's another thing you can do is just put some random displacement map in here. This also works with fire. So I'll show you how to make fire re like really easily. Just take photos, go to Unsplash, just search fire, download any of these, take this and run it into the emission color and also again, the alpha. And then this is a bit much, so let's just take that up. Apply the scale, re-unwrap it, just cube project. And let's just take this up. And there you go. Um, fire in like two seconds. No simulation needed. <laughs> that also works with video, by the way. If you have a video of fire and you just do the same technique, you can get uh, moving fire without um, yeah, simulating it or anything like that. So yeah, there's really unlimited things you can put into here and it'll look cool in a lot of them. So it's just about trying different images, finding what works and just messing around with it and just, yeah, just finding cool stuff. The next thing that I'll show you is an easy way to make light trails like this, uh, just out, pretty much out of anything. So let's just take this random image of like ramen and let's do it out of this, cause why not? So the way you do this is just take the UV map, scale it down on the X axis like this and just do that, just kind of move it around to a point where it looks cool. So it's just getting, you can see what it is. It's just that image, but it's getting really stretched out because we're scaling it down on the UV map so much that now it looks like all these light streaks. So I'll just expand that a bit and let's just take the strength down a little bit. And then I don't really like the color. So maybe let's take a hue saturation and just drop that in and change the hue. So I don't know, something like that. Sure, that's kind of cool. Maybe let's multiply in some other color. So just mix RGB, change it to multiply, uh, put this onto like some blue or something. I don't know, that's kind of cool. This one here, and these ones, that's all th these light trail things here, that's all that is, it's just a stretched out image that's running into the emission color and the alpha. And then you just do whatever you want to the color and then th there you go, it's uh, yeah. Ramen, ramen light trails. Okay, the third technique that you can use here that something that I use when I just don't really know what I wanna make, but I wanna make a thing that's cool is you can just take a plane, do a bit of modeling, like not even really modeling, you're just like moving a few basic shapes around 
until you make something that's some cool pattern or some cool shape or something. And you just take that and do the same thing. Put some cool textures on it. Put weird images into the color. Just try stuff until you get a, a cool like abstract thing. Something you'll see all the time is people using, and something I used to do all the time is just use um, an emission. Like you turn up the emission strength, but you don't have anything running into the alpha or the color variation. So it's just a flat white bar that's emitting light, which sometimes it looks cool to do that. But a lot of the times you just see this and right away, like anyone who's ever used Blender kind of knows right away. It's like, okay, it's the emission is just turned up. That's all it is. But if you run something else into the alpha or you run weird images into the color, it just switches it up and it makes it something that's not the same thing that everyone else is doing. And it just looks cooler and more interesting too. So you can take, let's take one of the examples that I just showed you. Let's just take that for just to show you like literally anything can run in here. Let's plug that in to the color, re unwrap this and just kind of take that down and line it up. That's kind of cool. Sure. What if we run this into the alpha? So let's put it in there. That's kind of interesting. I don't know. Maybe you take this the other way slightly. And then you can always just kind of duplicate this. Um, move the UV map around on the second one. So it's, I don't know, put that in like that. Yeah, there's so much stuff you can do by just taking like literally random images, running them into the color and the alpha and just getting weird, interesting results that you don't see other people doing just because it's always so random what you get. So um, don't be afraid to just try, like you can always do this. Like you can run one thing into the color and you can run a different thing into the alpha. So just try like weird stuff. And let's try doing like, um, let's take a, a displacement map from JS placement. Like, I don't know, this one. Let's run that into the alpha while we're running this into the color. And then just kind of, let's save this for later if I want it again. And just dial in some weird, setting like this. There we go. That's kind of cool. Maybe that's too much with this one. Maybe let's take the white handle for what's running into the alpha and just take that down so it's not fully opaque. So now we can kind of see through it, but I want the strength a bit higher so it's still bright. But now we can see things that are behind it. So it's, we're kind of getting both textures in at once. I don't know. There's just so much stuff you can do. Maybe let's duplicate this geometry. Yeah. Take this part, control L, delete those faces. Uh, maybe just move the UV map around, like, or just reproject it. Yeah, you can see there's just so much cool stuff you can do. And then once you have this set up, if you just take this, um, just open up whatever image is running into here and just swap it out for anything else. Now you can just get, you can try new things really, really fast by just swapping that image. Sometimes if you want to try different options, but you want to still save this for later, you can just duplicate that image click this button, like the two right here that pops up, just click that and it won't discard this image when you swap this one out. Now you just open up whatever you want, put a new one in. And if you don't like it, you can always just take the old one and run that back into the same thing. So there's really, like I said, just unlimited things you can try here instead of just like compare this to that. Like everyone knows, if you've ever used Blender or, or any software, you know what this is right away. It's not that interesting. If you just switch it up by running random images into the color and the alpha, you could just get so much more interesting results. Um, and it doesn't take any extra like effort. It's just opening up random images and just trying stuff and seeing what works. Some other tips to make this look good is one, use nice textures around it. So if you're wondering what this is, this floor, I did a tutorial like my last videos on how to make wet concrete textures like this, like reflective floors. Just go watch that, it's super easy. So I'll just put a link to it or a card or whatever in the video. One other thing you should do to make these look cool is use volumetrics like I showed here. So I just went into the world settings and just put a principled volume in and just adjusted the density and the anisotropy. If you're an EV, just turn on, turn on bloom. Um, if you don't wanna use volumetrics for some reason, use the glare node. Or if you don't wanna use that, bring it into Photoshop and add the glow yourself. As long as you have some kind of way to show that it's really bright and glowing, uh, just a subtle glow always looks nice as long as you don't uh, overdo it. Okay, hopefully you learned something about emission textures. Hopefully this inspires you to go and make some 
cool, interesting stuff that you haven't thought of before. And uh, yeah, thanks for watching. Subscribe here, turn on the notifications, follow me on Instagram. I'll link that below because I'm always posting new artwork. And uh, yeah, I'll see you around. Peace.